in dealing with debt. If you have debt, watch out for phony debt collectors. Here with top tips on how to spot a faker trying to get your money is Ted Rossman, the senior industry analyst at bankrate.com. Hello to you, Ted. Hi, Angie. Ted, tell us what you know about phony debt collectors. Is this a prevalent problem? Unfortunately, there are a lot of bad actors out there that are trying to scam people out of their money or their personal information or sometimes both. It's hard to put specific numbers behind it because I think a lot of these scams go unreported. But yes, they are common. They take a few different forms. Sometimes it's somebody posing as a debt collector. And sometimes they're pretending to be someone else, like a bank or a different lender or a government agency like the IRS. My best advice here is verify who you're speaking with. You want to hang up if they've called you, call back at a number that you trust and see if that is, in fact, the organization that they were saying it was. Um, sometimes this happens by email or text message. You don't want to click any suspicious links. Try to verify through independent means that you trust. What are some signs that someone is a fake debt collector? I think a big one is some kind of sense of urgency. If you get a call that says that if you don't pay this debt in the next two hours, you're going to go to jail. That's probably not true. Or I remember sitting next to a coworker once and he got a call from somebody pretending to be the IRS and supposedly he owed back taxes and he had to pay them in the next few hours with gift cards. That doesn't make any sense. That's not how government agencies operate. Um, so these are good indications of when something is fishy and you definitely want to verify through means that you trust. Any reputable debt collector is going to be able to provide documentation. So you can ask for written proof. You could also perhaps check your credit report and see if this is in fact money that you owe somebody. Um, there are definitely ways to track this down outside of that suspicious phone call or email or text message. Is there any recourse for someone who does get scammed? Do they ever get their money back, Ted? I think the best defense is to avoid sending money or giving personal info in the first place. It's hard to get that toothpaste back in the tube, if you will, if you have provided some of this money or information. There are regulatory agencies that could help, like the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and the Federal Trade Commission. In some cases, maybe it would even make sense to file a police report. But I think your best defense is to be knowledgeable on the front end and to not send out this kind of money or information. Like I said, go through those verification methods that we talked about. Uh, know also that every state has a statute of limitations on debt. So even if this is legitimate debt, sometimes they're trying to collect it past that expiration. It depends on the state, but it's often three to 10 years. So that's another thing to read up on. And then there's the whole outright scam angle, which is just don't engage. Always wonderful information. Thank you so much, Ted. Thanks for having me. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.